Um, we are here, Muna is our future with children care, and there's no better place to do that than in the house, in the home, in the place where it all takes place. And we want a big, uh, <laughs> a big thank you to our holy wife, our soulmate, for allowing us to do the classes here in a special, special place called home. No place like home. Home sweet home. We are here. Thank you for joining us. A little bit cool and cold. As you can see, I've got my scarf on inside. Monday, hopefully, we'll have the heating on. But right now, I'm using the heating for the warmth of videoing myself. <laughs> I'm using it as a stand because I wasn't expecting with the studio to not be available. Last minute, the main guy, unfortunately, came down with corona. I can't believe that it's you know, still going on. And as we always say, we're dedicating this class to be rid of Corona and all those kind of things. So unfortunately, we are still dedicating. And for his full recovery, everyone should uh, have in mind Leron. And please God, Leron Dag will be back. We had a wonderful picture of him last week in the studio. It was awesome. Thank you again. I hope the sound's not too echoey. Um, the room is like that. But um, we're happy to be here. We know it's a special, special time of year with Shovavim beginning, Shuvu Bonim, Shavovim, Pasha Shmos, a new Sefer, Sefer Shmos. And we're going to start the class dedicating this new series and our 93rd class. Yes, we do need another Muna class from Rav Shana Moresh and Rav Dayan Elgrad. They will be back. Please God, I don't know what happened this Sunday. I believe that they'll be back the following Sunday. We'll keep optimistic and hopefully all the different struggles that we're going through personally and on our platforms as well as globally. Hashem will give us the strength to get through the Tavis month, this wintry month, this challenging month, and all the things that are taking place that are manifesting those challenges. These Shabbat Muna class to Rav Shlema Avra Bas Chana, we should keep praying for her. Rav Hannah Bas Brocha Devor Leia, Rav Shlema, all these good people. Thank you so much for your Shlichas and all the families need them. Baruch Hashem success of our special guests and family in the Holy Land. This is real Amuna Tuesday. We went live even though the studio team is out. So we can still do this in our home studio. Thank you, thank you for making an appearance. Give some feedback, give some love. Yes, yes, yes. We're Instagram Live, we're Facebook Live, YouTube Live on Breads of English platforms. Yes, yes, yes. Amuna is our future. We're caring for children. We are in the home. And that's right, that's the flow, the, the flow today. These classes are for Elevation Pure Solgidalia Sun. We should all have healthy children, and unfortunately his son went up to Shemayim, but a holy, holy shlichus that he did while he was here, and all the mitzvahs, I heard Dalia say himself, all the mitzvahs that he caused and created by his merit, and all the dedications that we've had, Yerachmedem and Gedalia. The preacher dedication to our middle class, our teachings, we wish, of four shlemets of Shalom ben Yemna, Tidur Chabas Masha, Eliel ben Regina, and anyone else who needs a four should have a four, a full healing, and... Uh, we are the Amuna class, right? And let's go into the feedback. You are awesome, Rabbi Goldsmith. I'll be praying for all of you, Amen. And remember one other tagline, Amuna Global. That means you guys need to get this energy out there globally. One other announcement as well, before I get to this awesome feedback, you're awesome, Rabbi Goldsmith. I'll say it again. Yeah, it's good to keep hearing some good energy about yourself. Shalom de Ravelli. Yes, we have to get on our tablet so I can see all the feedback clearer because my eyesight is going in my young age. Thank God. Let's do it. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Shalom de Ravelli. What is a proper prayer for, to the Creator for needing permanent shelter? Blessings. Yes, we will get there. Good question. Keep them coming. Yeah, we, will like, we love these questions. Anything we don't answer here, we'll get to hopefully in our weekly middle class. We'll get to those questions with the Rav Shalom Morish and the English translation from Dain Elgrad. Hopefully that will be coming this Sunday. And so keep the questions coming. Keep the energy, the sharing coming. Let's keep going into the feedback. And the other announcement is Unity Bookings website has gone live. It's still in development. But check it out. The link's there below. Unity Bookings, uh, the, the website link is unityinspiresprojects.com. Easy to do. It's right in Unity Inspires, all S with S at the end, to inspiresprojects.com. And we've explained already Unity Inspires Projects. The concept is that Unity is the thought level, inspires is us speaking out and getting the energy and the, the journey together done. And the projects is bringing it alive, bringing it in live in real time to make that Unity Inspires Projects a real focus. So 
anybody out there who doesn't feel inspired, that's what we're here for, to try to learn together weekly and keep that energy coming. Thank God. Okay, so here we are. I hope that's clear. I hope everyone can see and hear. We're, lo- we're loving the, uh, the fact that we're in the house energy flow. We're talking about children. Right now I have a bar mitzvah coming up in a few weeks. It's actually less than that now, less than two weeks. Pasha's Vieira, Shabbos Vieira will be in Yushalayim for a wonderful bar mitzvah. My youngest son, so it's actually my last bar mitzvah, very emotional about that and very excited to do the flow together. I want to ask you all, please, 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 to keep sharing Amuna Global, keep joining us at MunaLive.com, keep bringing out the platforms of Breslev English and a growing flow. Yes, keep giving some love, means a lot. So let's go into the feedback. You're awesome, Rabbi Goss. I'll be praying for all you. Amen. Really nice share. Thank you, dear Rabbi Ali. Great to follow your learning of Amuna Ali Goldsmith. May him and all our wonderful IDF be divinely protected and always victorious. Yes, that was about my son, Baruch Yitzhak. Ben Mashe, should have Shmer Liano, should have heavenly protection. He is, thank God, gone live, as well as your United Souls extract, which talked about heavenly protection. There's now Hashkacha Pratis, Divine Providence. I put out another extract from my book, and it's talking about facing and being really on in your life, no matter what, even with all the struggles we're going through, and have heavenly protection. And that's perfect timing. And we had the Techis, the third Techis of my son. I spoke about this concept of three in the Shirat David, this, this uh, Shabbos by Rav Shlomo Katz, his beautiful community there in Efrat. And we spoke about the idea of the three, Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazek. We just had Shabbos Chazak, and we went into that concept of threes, and we know the third-born son is Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is the third-born son, and this week's Pasha he's born, and he brings out the Orki Tov, this heavenly light, into the world, and he's a shliach, an agent, and, and a sadik, and continuation. We'll talk about it in terms, say, for example, in Mitzrayim, and we see this nowadays, that the Melech Chodesh, yeah, there's all different explanations what that means, but one of the explanations is that the Klai Yisrael in the world forgot about Yosef Asadi. Specifically, the Mitzrim are, are hosts, they forgot about who the Sadiq is, the concept of the Sadiq, the Sadiq Emes. And this is something which we all go through on a real level, uh, the idea that there is a Sadiq Emes, the, the Siddiqim, Amitim, the concept of righteous people, true righteous people that are for all the generations, they all have a splash of the Moshe. Everyone in all the world, all the Jewish people specifically, have a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Sadiq, Yisod Olam, the idea of the one who's the cleave for Kabbalah Satoya, the one to be the Shliach, to take us out with Moshe and Aaron together, out of Mitzrayim. We see in this week's Pasha the love between two brothers, Moshe and Aaron, the idea of the, the Shika, the kiss between them, the show of love that they have towards each other and, and the ability to honor each other in a full sense. I spoke about it the Shabbos, Musaf, the idea of Hina Matavumanayim, Shevetachim Gam Yacha. It's a Dovid Melech in the Psalms, in Psalms 120, sorry, 132, the idea, or 33, the idea, the concept of Hina Matavumanayim, Shevetachim Gam Yacha. How fortunate it would be when all the brothers dwell together, it says the Gemara, the Moshe and Aaron had the Yerush Shemaim, had the awareness of God that gave them the ability to be anointed, especially Aaron Cohen, anointed with two pearls. It was not Mila, it was not being Nana from Kedush, from Kedushim, from, from the Kedushas of, of the Shaman. They were not Nana from, from holy products. It was only meant to be a certain amount. Moshe Rabbeinu was anointing Aaron Cohen. And then from that came out the Kahuna, the, the, the priesthood, the idea that there's a spark of holiness and a shlichus to serve Hashem, like we bring down this light of the base of English into the world. This is our job as Klai Yisrael. We're not here just to hang out. We're here to do a specific mission. And Moshe and Aaron were the epitome of that. And their the Yerushalayim, it says, Ketel Chamon. It was like the Ketel Chamon, these two little drops. It wasn't Me'ila. It wasn't Nena from Kodshim. It wasn't some Issa. It, it weren't even over on anything. It was amazing. Those two little drops stayed by Aaron and Cohen's beard. And they went with him throughout his Kahuna. And the concept is that those two little drops of oil were an example of the Yerushalayim, of Moshe and Aaron. These idea that the holy brothers. And this is the concept of this week's part. We see the kissing of between the two brothers, the connection, the love and the will that other people around you should be successful. We wish blessings for all the Unity Bookings people that we're working with. They should all be blessed. Alex Clare, and Black, Moshe, Reuven, 
Rudy Rochman, the whole website list of people with the Baruch Hashem are setting it all up, all the speakers, all the musicians, all the artists. Obviously, Rosh Hashanah Baruch who wanted to be successful, hopefully organizing a trip to LA and to El Salvador, to Miami, to UK. We want to really do that. Rabbi Brody's on the tour. We wish him success coming up soon to South Africa. It's not like a competition here. We're all here together. Thank God. So let's just go back and see where we're at on the tablet of any feedback. Once again, anyone can reach out on YouTube and Facebook. We're here for you guys and uh, on a weekly level when it's important that people say things and co comment, give us that connection. And uh, I do apologize about any mess in my room. I just uh, noticed on YouTube, but I just uh, didn't have time to really organize everything the best way. And thank God, you know, it's busy time. We're leading up to the mitzvah and we want it to all be blessed for everybody involved. Everyone who's coming, thank God, to the Holy Land. All those people on Instagram Live, we wish you love. So I can't wave at you on the, the button, but I'm waving to you in my heart and my words. Thank God, words of Torah. So let's finish off the feedback and we'll get into the holy light of the Or Chadash, the new light. May the promise of Hashem our God surround your son with him and protect him as a pupil of the eye. Amen. It's about Baruch at Mazel Tov. And he, him now getting the, the third part of his army journey of joining San Kanim Paratrooper as a big step. He has a gun, he has a Tanakh. He, it's a big step forward. Please keep making these types of videos, someone wrote. Very nice work. Use a service like PromoSM, whatever that means. Love the new booklets, so needed to show them. Yes, breastlove.com. Check out the new booklets. We have um, True Happiness and Salvation from Shabbos. That's the Shabbos focus. And also loving your, uh, someone else's son like your son. Let's go. The special guests. Yes, this week we don't have any special guests. Special guests, I'm in my house. And we're focusing on caring for children. We see the Moshe and Aaron themselves were an example of caring for children of Bnei Yisrael, the children of Israel, they gave up everything to care for all the children, for all the people, because we're all children of Hashem, to care and show, and the way he looked after his sheep was, in this week's part, we learned out from Moshe Benu, the, the tender love and care for his sheep, and his Messiah's Nevis, to make sure that not one would get lost, this is a, gave him the power to then become a leader of Klai Yisrael. that's the testing ground, how he looks after his children, and we all need to work on that, me included, is something which is very challenging nowadays with our own struggles and pressures. Yeah, here's the book booklet for true happiness. I have it in English here. Didn't forget that I had it with me. And it says, Amuna, Hashem always loves me and everything will always be good and it only gets better and get better. My voice is important saying in the back of the booklet, as well as we have the magnets as well. Don't forget, get your magnet for your fridge, for your metal door. Amuna, Hashem always loves me, everything will always be good and it will only get better and better. That's the energy, that's the vibe, that's the saying, that's the flow of Amunah as our future class. And now we're going to go into the teachings of Rav Shalom Arash, and we'll connect it into prayers for our children and becoming more caring for our children. When we know that Hashem is truly compassionate, this is in Perik Sheish, which is chapter 6, Or Chadosh, A New Light, the book A New Light, and we're at page 214, page 214, Give me life in your ways. We know that Hashem is truly compassionate, that His compassion is infinite, and in His will to extend compassion to all beings, we can make every spiritual request when it's purpose of all creation, of all the entire trait of compassion. In accordance with this, we may understand Moshe's prayer, and this week's Barsha, Moshe comes, the beginning of Moshe's discussion with Hashem, how to save Amisor, of all of the Jews during the episode of, of the Miraglim, here we're talking about the Miraglim, later on in the Torah, please forgive the sin of this nation in accordance with the greatness of your kindness. And as you have forgiven this nation from Egypt until now, Moshe said, just as you forgave them until this point, forgive them now as well. This raises a question. Is that an argument? On the contrary, if after all the times that Hashem forgave them, they sinned again, they do not deserve to have him forgive them now. But Moshe knew very well that Hashem wants to forgive the nation of Israel because he wants people to do tshuva. Therefore, Moshe did not request forgiveness because the nation of Israel deserved it. On the contrary, he requested forgiveness because he did not deserve it. And that's because grand forgiveness reveals Hashem's compassion. As the verse says, may the power of Hashem be increased now as you spoke, saying, Hashem is patient and extremely kind. Moshe meant to say, now is the time to reveal all the traits of compassion you taught me. Now I must forgive the people because this is the way in your true will. See, Moshe Rabbeinu, well, not only do we know we get the Torah from Moshe, we see his power of prayer, the concept by the miraculous and the spies, but even all the way at the beginning, we see that the Kaisal had fallen into such a low place and came Moshe Rabbeinu to awaken the souls of Kaisal, to give them that inspiration, that a reminder that there's miracles and that there's Hashem and there's there's a purpose and Hashem yeah yeah that Hashem will take us out 
that the idea that there will be a redeemer and this shall be this concept there will be a future and it's an Akutatova future a place of good points as Ravosh was teaching in his beautiful clip the idea of bringing out the bringing out the kedusha the holiness the forgiveness the intrinsic good of Christ's will that we must and must forgive our people because this is the essence of who we are we deserve forgiveness no but Hashem will forgive us because of His compassion. And how much he loves us and the power of tefillah. And indeed the Holy One has forgives and acquits. He told Moshe, I've forgiven in accordance with your word. Slachdi Kudarech. We say this Yom Kippur. We say this throughout the year. Uh, certain times of slicha and forgiveness as, and continues as I live. The Gemara puts these two phrases together and prays a wonderful interpretation. This teaches the Holy One. Blessed be Tom Moshe, you have revived me with your words. This means that Shem Tom Moshe, this was truly my entire world. To forgive and compassion on the nation of Yisrael. Can I forgive without prayer and outcry? Your outcries and arguments, as it were, help me forgive them as I truly wanted. Then, as it were, you remind me of your words. So right now in Shogunim, we see this concept of the beginning of Klai Yisrael going, becoming a nation and in exile, in a difficult shibit of slavery. And then Hashem sending us an agent, a shliach, someone, shliach kamosa, like we have in the Gemara and the Dharam, the shliach is like the, per, the mishaleach, the person sending themselves. Hashem sent an agent, it's like Hashem himself is coming and taking us out, Mitzrayim himself. And in the end, we re re revealed that that's truly the truth, that it's all Hashem. Hashem is the one taking out Moshe Reina, which is the shliach, just an agent to, to be the messenger of this process of us slowly going out, Mitzrayim. I mean, it took about a year or so and all the makas, all the plagues, we're going to get into it next week, Meyera and Bo. Remember, Shobavim is Rosh Hashanah, Shmos, Beyera, Bo, Bishalach, Yisro, Mishpotim. These are the six parshas, the six first letters of these holy six parshas of Mitzvah Yisrael and the Kabbalah, the Torah, and we know also in the middle is Chris Yam. So the miracles Hashem does with the Esamachus and the fifty Machus by the Yam, as or as there's more and more as we go through the Seder night, we remind ourselves in the Haggadah how many miracles really were there. I was beyond beyond the Malachim and the. In fact, Hashem himself came and, and showed his love towards us. Even in this week's Pasha, it's already the beginning of show, showing his intense love for us. B'nai B'chori, that we are the B'chor, we are the, the firstborn of the world, and we have a certain purpose, a racist, yeah, a beginning, a, a, the first, the idea, the concept that we have to be a light unto the nations. And it already is brought down in the love, the tremendous love he has for us. In this week's Pasha, we already see it in the dedication that, even in such difficult times, even though we'd fallen so much. And this is a, a live, real avoda now, a real service for us, a real awakening for us in this end of day situation, just before Mashiach comes, the Hashem's giving us all the light of Shobim to remind us the Sadiq, even if it seems like the Sadiq passed away, like we see at the beginning of the Pasha, the Melachodesh, and they forgot from Yosef. But the idea, the Ur of Yosef, the, the Vav, the six weeks, this holy light, the light of the Sadiq, this comes into play in these six parshas, the concept of the Sadiq showing his connection to us as children. So we are the children, Hashem's caring for us and showing us during these six weeks. And another concept of Shobhavim is the idea of bringing down seed, bringing down souls, bringing down the, in the right way, in the holy way, in the true way, what we look at, how we speak, how we use our bris kodesh, the concept of relationships between us and our soulmate and bringing down souls through that and the concept of everything done in the right way, in the right time, with the right kavanas, with the right intentions. And this is the concept of bringing down holy souls. This is the beginning of all the, the children that we have in the world. It comes first through the father and mother, how they connect and through the relationship and through how we prepare ourselves to, to get to that relationship before we're married even. We're already preparing now our children for their building, their binyan shalim, the mitzvah, the process of the filling and the bas mitzvah, the siddur, and all the different things that we're doing, all the mysterious nevish, all the efforts we're making right now. We just kitted out my son, he was wearing his hat, his jacket, the whole thing, the record, in the bekshah, please God, all the different begodim of kedusha, kedusha of holiness that will bring him to think of life in a more elevated way when he comes to prayer, when he comes to serve Hashem. In the, in the ideal times, please God, we zoka to, to that awe, to that light with our children. But this is the concept that Moshe is bringing down the forgiveness. This teaches the Holy One, best to be told Moshe, you revive me of your words. This means that Hashem told Moshe, this was truly my entire to forgive and compassion on the nation of Israel. But I cannot forgive about prayer and outcry. We have to pray, we have to cry. Your outcries and arguments, as it were, help me forgive them as I truly want to. Like, how much do we need to cry for our children nowadays and pray for our children? It's such a challenge. Just think about it, guys. 
You know, look at what's going on out there. Look at the world that we, our children are inheriting, and you know the kind of reality of politically and emotionally and spiritually and all the different things going on. We all need to pray for our children that they should have a muna. Is our future kind of life that's filled with a muna? The future should be filled with connection to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the connection, the ability to pray for realities, not to get caught up in life so much of trying to get this website on and working. Uh, and then suddenly he stops working on the computer at the office and then the guy office guy can't come and then you're like all these things and now I'm back here in my house I have to get back home to record this so it's delayed a few hours I apologise but the concept is you're praying and praying Hashem please help I'm trying to do something for close I'm trying to do something for the Jewish people for the world and we are together to get this done this can't be done alone I need you guys to get this done. I need this energy out there of people interested in Amuna, knowing that the platforms are growing and it's something that people want, that they need, they're thirsty for. Like we said last week, they're hungry for Das, for true wisdom. Check out the previous cards. And also check out Relationship Flow, where I discuss the idea, this great connection that we're all getting right now in our relationships through the Shavim, through the, this elevation of, of Mochim, expanded consciousness. We're tuning into the light of the Sadiq. Why Shabbat gives us expanded consciousness. The light of the Yosef and Sadiq, expanded consciousness. We had it already in Hanukkah. It doesn't just disappear, the inspiration. We're bringing it into this time of Shabbat in these next six weeks, all the way till we get to Purim. And the Kedusha's lady says that through the Tukunim of these six weeks, we come out clothed, the new clothing, that we celebrate Purim with the, the true Yehudim Aysa the Simcha Vesosimika, the light, this Megala, the, the revelation is even bigger in a way than what we got Hanukkah because now it's manifesting in, our, in how, we, how we express ourselves in our clothing. And how clothing represents not just our clothes, but also how we express in our speech. It spoke about unity, inspires projects in what we're doing, how we're thinking, how we're, how we're acting and how we're inspiring those around us. This is the concept. Okay, so everyone out there, thank you, Hashem. We have the ability to tune into these teachers. Let's go a little bit ahead more with Rav Shalom Moish. Since I have no pressure on me, no one knocking on the door for this in the studio class. Here it is. Let's go. Your outcries arguments, as it were, bottom of 215. Your outcries arguments, as it were, help me forgive them as I truly want to. There was a way you revived me of your word. So to everyone who asks Hashem to help in spiritually, in this sense, eliciting Hashem's will. Therefore, you can entreat Hashem with all your might, because you are, as it were, looking to help Hashem to do what he wants to do. Master of the universe, I will ask you... Your true will be actualized because in this way your name is made great and it's true will and your salvation as it were. This is a very pure kind of feelers. The concept of prayers, the concept of the Amuna Shlema, the idea of pure Amuna, complete Amuna. Yeah, to pray to Hashem, for this is something very wondrous may be derived. Turn the page, 216. Prayer with wholeness of face, Amuna Shlema. Hashem wants to bestow is the perfect prayer that merges out of wholeness, Amuna Shlema, because it's, it's, it just doesn't work, faith, it just doesn't. It's intrinsic knowledge. It's very deep. It's part of our essence, not just faith. Moreover, there's an additional wondrous depth to the way of this prayer. Such prayer is entirely on behalf of Hashem. Hannah, 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 my mother, Hannah. My mother is called Hannah Liba. She should be well. Hannah Liba, my simcha, she was full shlema. She wasn't well recently. She should be able to come visit her grandson of the of Please God, and all the family. Hashem allowed Hannah to pray on behalf of Hashem. That was the idea of Shmuel and Novi. Says the concept of praying on behalf of Hashem. Shmuel and Novi in Shmuel, we know it's Sefer Shmuel, the idea of Samuel. <laughs> Sounds funny. Sefer Shmuel, the idea that Hannah prayed for her children, prayed. She was the epitome of the Shmuel Esra, what Tefillah is, what prayer is. Because she was praying on behalf of Hashem. That is because Hashem deeply wants us to change and comport ourselves the way that the son of the king should act. And it's one of the a daughter of the queen or the king. Therefore, we pray on behalf of Hashem. We pray as well should be actualized and realized. We pray the intent of Hashem, who so much wants and yearns and waits for his sovereignty and faith. Yeah, once again, faith, loose translation, Malchus and Amuna to be revealed, for his name to be enhanced and sanctified for awareness, thoughts and truth, and all going to pour down abundantly on the house of Israel and the world, to be actualized, revealed, and maintained in this world. This is another reason that such prayers bring about salvation. It's called uh, yeah, these are tefillah shalom, yeah, perfect prayers, yeah. We want to have prayers that are, per people are perfectionists nowadays, big challenge emotionally. How many of you out there have perfectionism? Like, I wouldn't be doing this shit if I was a perfectionist because it's not perfect background and it's not the perfect audio and I'm not in the studio, so I'll just cancel the shit. That's most people who are perfectionists would do. But thank God I'm not a perfectionist and I know the importance of getting this done on a weekly level consistency and no matter what studio right now is out of action, Baruch Hashem, we have 
Wi-Fi, we have a bunch of phones, we have YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, podcast. Let's get it out there. If it comes out good, we'll even use it further platforms, TikTok, this, that, and go further, further, further. Please go, the light of Amunna keeps growing. That's the, the, the concept of not being a perfectionist. But here with tefillah, there's a perfect prayer. So if you've got that perfectionist trait, use it for perfect prayer. Use it for Kedusha, for holiness. What's the perfect prayer? Yeah, let's, let's understand this concept. Yeah, Because it is prayer without any personal interest. Prayer that is 100% for the sake of performing Hashem's will. What constitutes imperfection of prayer? Yeah, For you perfectionists out there that's here. Prayer is imperfect when it contains self-interest and personal will. But in, this, but in this kind of prayer, a person has no personal will. His entire intent is only what Hashem wants to want Hashem's will to be actualized. So it's funny, we had Chana here, we have Moshe Rabbeinu here, we're caring for children. These are people who prayed for the children more than anyone. We know that Chana's prayer is the, the epitome prayer, the ultimate prayer of prayer. And this is what Hashem wants. Hashem wants us to have children. Hashem wants us to bring about a nation of holy children, Am Kodesh, and a light unto the world. This is the concept that comes through prayer. The tefillahs are so important and it builds that will, builds that yearning, builds that relationship. This is the book of the garden of yearning, the garden of will, the will, the rotsen, the condition to horror, the purity of Shogavim right now that we're in. This is being built through prayer so we can bring it out. That's the true way and sincere way of showing our care for our children is all the prayer we put in. It's not just enough to be a nice guy. Yeah, It's not just enough to put on a good show for our children. Someone wrote here, um, good morning from Dallas. Someone else wrote, Baruch Haba. Yeah, Baruch Hazaloi. I don't understand Spanish. Excuse me, just picking this up. Don't want to leave it on the floor. The magnet, holy magnet. Get that up in your fridge. The idea, yes. Ricardo Lustig. I haven't seen you for a while. Nice to see you. Okay, and we do have, by the way, a long list of questions for our We're going to have even more amount of questions now that the class was delayed this week. So hopefully we'll get to it soon. So let's carry on. Let's finish off this concept of Amuna, Shlema, and perfect prayer. Yeah, that no personal will. His entire son only to one where Hashem wants, to one Hashem's will to be actualized. So when you're praying for children in a way, you're tuning into that. That's showing your true care. Therefore, this prayer is called prayer with wholeness of Amunah. Wholeness of Amunah means a person knows there is no other than he. That means there is no I. If so, on whose behalf is put on to pray in this world? On behalf of other people, on behalf of himself? There are no other people. There's no himself. There's only Hashem. What a high prayer. Yeah, we talked about praying for all of Christ or praying for the world. This is a very, very deep concept from Rosh Hashanah That really, Enon Mavada, there's nothing else than Hashem. So the ultimate prayer is to only pray for Hashem. That shows the Mona Shlema, that really are just praying for the truth of the Eino Mavala. There's nothing else but Hashem. We're praying for our Creator, praying for our King, praying for the true source of everything. This is getting to the root of everything, of all creation. These are the most sincere, true prayers. Nothing to do with me, nothing to do with anybody else. It's an ultimate prayer of praying for Hashem. There are no other people, there's no there's only Hashem. Therefore, all prayers are only by Hashem. A person's prayer refers only to the will of Hashem and not to his own will, because his own will is the will of Hashem. Prayer on behalf of human is a lack of faith. But that is the case, how do we pray? An example, if a person is ill, that is because he has sinned. The true will of Hashem, that he would do true, and rectify the spiritual cause of his illness. Then he will cover. Thus, prayer must be on behalf of Hashem, so that he will help this person do tshuva, which means that Hashem's intent will be fulfilled, and in consequence, the person will be healed. You understand how deep that is? It's like a whole switch of thinking. But now we're busy healing the world, because that's Hashem's will. And Hashem's going to give us the power to heal the world and bring tshuva and bring forgiveness and bring blessing and bring everything we need. All the chef for the panasa, all the money that we need, all the connection, all the success. It's because Hashem's will, not because I need it. And maybe that's holding what's holding us back. Let's get out of this ego way of thinking. I was just learning from Rashai's Tab this week and the concept of lave, the, 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 the 32nd chapter of Tanya. Beautiful safer, beautiful parrot. And what's Abbas so Abbas as well is going beyond getting into the soul level, getting into the Elakushaba, that you have a godly soul. And that's the kind of level of connection. That's where the heart, the true heart of a person is with the oneness of creation. And really that all of the souls are one or Khalik Alamaim 
Chelik Elakanim Al Mamish from Hashem Yisbarach. So really, we're all united in that true level, and that's what we're learning in the extracts of my book below. And that's the concept. It's not because of my book. So it's, it's truth. It's a manifestation of truth in these extracts. The concepts of oneness, the concepts of truth. This gives us chizuk to, to become more, to more bittel to the Herotz and Hashem, not to get caught up in all this Alam Azer stuff from down here. And all the and all the yeshes, all the things that we need, all the eyes, the wees, the iPhones, the wees, on the even the we is spelled with a W I because it's all about myself. How much does this idea apply when we pray for spiritual matters? Oh, the opposite. Spiritual matters is about getting out of self. Then it's easy to understand the entirety of our prayers on behalf of the will of Hashem. That's the true prayer. Who created a person so and would come close to him, not so that he would be an animal on two legs. Every time we engage in prayer to free ourselves from our animal nature, our cravings, and to come close to Hashem. It's the same about Abbas and Sarah. True Abbas and Sarah is becoming one with the souls. Yeah, we are engaging in prayer on behalf of Hashem's will and Hashem's honor. That is, children will appear as he wants them to appear. Therefore, when we cite such prayer, we may ask for immediate salvation. We want to have good kids. We care for our children. Let's get into true prayer. True prayer will give us the tools to become amazing fathers and mothers. It will give us the ability to truly tune into the soul level of our children. Now, as children have souls, each one of our children, we have to visualize. That was the visualization I had all those years ago when I did tshuva when I was 18, 19, about to travel to Eretz Yisrael. I was saying to Shir David, I was saying to Shir David, to the community there just before Musa, the concept is, that we're, and the vision is that we're all souls surrounded by light. And we're all connected, and that's the vision we have to have in our home, even when the children are driving us crazy, to remind us of these are heiliger souls, these are holy souls, we're one with Hashem, and we don't have to become crazy because it's all Hashem, and Hashem wants us to give love and compassion and be like Him, to have midas like Hashem, yeah, to become one with Hashem. Yeah, and then we can ask for these immediate salvations when we're praying like this. So, too, when we seek to be rested from sinning, we must pray. If you're well, I will not commit any sin, any transgression. If you do not give me the power to overcome my inclination, I will continue to sin. Because really, all the strength we have to fight the eight horrors comes from Hashem. I need you to give me strength not to sin even one more time, because every sin means death. And you want me to live, and I'm only alive when I cling to you and live in accordance with your will. But I lack the tools now, therefore, please give me the tools now and the wholeness of will, the intent will be revealed so that I will not commit any sin from this moment onwards. And I say the same prayer for our children. They should have the strength to re resist all the temptations of our time, all the distractions, all our children. Oh, children, please God, we should pray for all of them. I'll go through all their names, should know their names, should be close to your heart, the names of your children. Um, and my last daughter, child who will have bas mitzvah soon another year please God all of them should be blessed and that's the same with all your children and really my voice is trying to get to a level where we're praying for all of the children because we have a love for all the children because in the end we're all souls and we have a love for, really for the rots and Hashem we have such a love for Hashem they want the rots and Hashem to be filled so we're praying for Hashem himself that his will should be fulfilled through us we should be the shlichim, just like Moshe Rabbeinu was on the whole ultimate level of this. And we see already the beginning of the Pasha, he's filling his house with light, just being born. And the concept is he's bringing light for the Jewish people, saving us from the chosh of the darkness of exile, bringing us out of the pain, the struggle, the difficulties, being an agent of light and love and protection and caring for the children. This is the concept. All these charities, all these institutions, all these people, the point is once you get out of the yesh, the, the ego, Shabbat, then you start serving Hashem, the, the true shlichim of Chabad, the true shlichim of Amuna, the true concept, the, the true lom de toyu lishma, the idea of doing things for a higher cause, for a higher purpose. This is the light that's missing, that the world is missing in such a big way that we can do things for a higher, higher purpose. Very high concept from our voice. Thank you for joining us on our weekly Amuna class. We want to show our care for our children. There has to be that love. That's what we put in the YouTube video, cover photo, the concept of love. But it comes from a love from Hashem, a love of the will of Hashem should be fulfilled. And that's through our children that we're all tuned in. Everything sources back through the soul, comes back through the soul, through the Bris Kodesh, through Shogavim Tata, tuning into the Kedusha of Klai of, of Am Yisrael's mission in the world, tuning into that inner light and that inner will of God and that inner will of our souls that wants to become one with Hashem Yisbarach. And I'll just give you one more concept. We mentioned it briefly last week, but these six weeks are connected to Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alakeinu, Hashem Echad. So right now we're in the Shema. First now we need to listen. The beginning of the whole concept is... is 
is Avinu Abu Rachman Rachim Aleinu Sein Rudi Bein and Bina Havin Haskil to just listen to to understand to internalize to get into these concepts and then we can start tuning into Yisrael as the Machas start to begin to the souls and the Shem Alekeinu Shem is our God Shem is one we can only really fully get there once we have the Torah Kedusha once we have the revelation of Hashem's will fully manifested and thank God in our generation we have it with us but we're going through these postures together to experience that journey so we can re-receive the Torah anew fresh and as a Kriya Ma'or as man, the reading of the Torah of these six parshas, these sweet six weeks, is Ma'or, it wakes up and aware it brings out an awareness, a truth of the time of of Kabbalah's Torah, of going out in time and receiving the Torah, we're gonna to go through when we get to Chodesh Nisan and Chodesh Ia and Sivan with the Yitzir Satraim and then the Kabbalah Satoira and on Vav Zion Nis Sivan, excuse me, and the concept of the Kabbalah Satoira comes together right now in these six weeks, not then how it manifests in time, it manifests through the Kriya, the Kriya, the reading, the learning, brings it about. And that's why it's so important to bring out your relationship with God, relationship with people, to bring it into real life. And that's why we're talking about these concepts even in 2023, a new year, and the, in the general calendar. Someone else, gracias por the Rav. Thank you very much. We look forward to having the Rav back. Hopefully everyone keep praying for Shalom Ben Yemen. We'll hopefully have a class this coming Sunday. Wish everyone a beautiful rest of the week, a beautiful Shabbos Shmos. Next week will be a Pasha for me, a Shabbos Bar Mitzvah. So I'll be a little bit busy. I'm going to try and get a class done next week, hopefully in the studio. And the following week, somehow I'm if I can get a class done as well. I've got family staying, all kinds of things going on. But the concept is we care for our children. There's something intrinsic in our being because it's the will, the souls, the soul connection, it's the oneness. And that's the true reality. We should bring that into our home for the Shabbos. So the Shabbos will be beautifully blessed. Yes, thank you for us. Always ready to, to support Amuna in the world. But we need everyone, all the languages, everyone. Let's translate this global. Amuna global. Amen. Thank you. Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. And enjoy the light of Moshe Rabbeinu entering into our Kriya Satoya, into the Parshas. Enjoy the light of the Sadiq. Enjoy the light of your soul. And tune in to the truth and prayer of Amuna Shlema. Amen. Thank you.